So there's a hard truth about getting an engineering degree that not many people talk about. There's a good chance that you don't know what you're getting yourself into. And in this video, I want to make that very clear and set the expectation. And I want to prepare you for that. Not all engineering jobs are exciting. Not all of them involve innovation and not all of them are going to be fun. Many of them are boring. Many of them involve paperwork. Many of them are just not what you expect. Many jobs will just involve you sitting in a cubicle all day and just doing things that you will find pretty meaningless. Now, the good news is that there are jobs, other jobs that are career paths that you can do within engineering that are rewarding and involve innovation and are fun and are more sexy. But getting an engineering degree does not guarantee that you're going to land one of those nice jobs. But there are things that you could do to increase the odds of being in that pile. So now you may ask, okay, what separates the engineers or the engineering students that fall into the boring jobs versus the exciting jobs? And obviously, this is like a very subjective measure based on what you personally find exciting. But my definition of exciting fun job is a job that involves like innovation, creativity, thinking, and where you get to have like ownership in the projects versus a more boring job is one where you just kind of get told what to do and do the same thing over and over and you just in your office all day counting the time waiting to go home. Now, let me be clear about something. Some people go into engineering for the sole purpose of getting a job as in like kind of the transactional, I pay money for a degree, I get job, I get paid, and then I go home and do whatever I want. And then these kind of people are not quite so interested in the type of work that they're doing, but rather that the idea that engineering will get them a job that they can get a paycheck out of and then go home and do whatever they want with that. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that's your life philosophy and that's what you choose to do, kudos to you. That's And I know many people who do that and they're like living very happy and fulfilled lives. But what if that's not what you want? What if you want to do something that's like a lot more meaningful, exciting, engaging, and using more innovation, creativity involves more your brain. And for that, you're going to need three things. One, you're going to need the desire to build great things and the desire to innovate and the drive to go and make these things happen. Two, you're going to need a high enough skill level. You're going to need to be proficient at whatever it is you're doing. And three, and this comes like later, it's much more important to have the first two. Third is that you would need the networking slash exposure to run into the people who have those exciting jobs that they can offer you. So now assuming that you have defined what the exciting job looks like, like or the exciting internship that you want to go after. And let's say that you want to go build software at NASA. You want to write software in C++ that's going to help, I don't know, like a satellite that's going to go to Venus, execute on some commands and make sure that it does like some mapping or scanning of the atmosphere very well. Now, obviously, it sounds very exciting and engaging, does not sound boring at all. It sounds very difficult. But in order for you to be the person that is chosen to do that, you have to be really, really, really good at building software. And you have to be really, really, really good at understanding systems and understanding how your software would fit in with the rest of the satellite, such as the hardware such as the antennas, the other instruments and the payload. And you would probably have to be like at the top 10%, if not 1% in your field to be able to get these kind of positions. And that's not necessarily the case. Some people who are not like top 1% or top 10% of what they do, they can still get those jobs or internships, whether it be through networking or like they get in at the right time or know the right recruiter. But that's not really what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is positioning yourself to increase the likelihood and put the odds in your favor such that you're not relying on luck, you're not relying on chance, but rather you're increasing the odds based on your own skill set. Also, a big disclaimer, life is not fair. You could do everything right and you could be at the top of your field and you could still not get that job. Nothing really is guaranteed. But again, the thing I'm talking about is stacking the odds in your favor. And my philosophy is that if you really want to be good at something, you have to be so good, they just can't ignore you. The people who are doing that will come searching for you because they see that you have the skill set and the mindset necessary to execute on that task. So how do you improve your skill set to be at that so good they can't ignore you stage? Well, let's go back to our flight software example or like software. Let's say you want to write software for a satellite and that's like a dream job or, or mission that you're interested in. And let's say you graduate in like two years. So you're like a sophomore, junior, and you still have time. What can you do today to increase the odds of the people who are looking for someone with that kind of skill set to hire you? So the first thought that may come to your mind is, okay, well, I probably should take a class on like how to write flight software. And if that is offered in your school, sure, go for it. But the best way to learn from my personal experience and the way to learn very quickly is to learn by doing things. In other words, try to build flight software yourself. Look at your university or school and see if there are any clubs, organizations, or projects projects that have some type of whether like a small sat, CubeSat, rocket, airplane, even if you can't really get anything flight or like a balloon, or even if like you can't really find a project that flies that you can get engaged in, try to find something like that at least moves, like whether it's like a car or like a robot, because if you can build really good software for a robot, well, you're much one step closer to building really good software for a satellite. Not many things will be different. You're still going to need to send commands to actuators and you're going to receive signals from sensors and you're going to have to organize all that information. And suppose you don't go to university at all and your school does not have any of these things. Well, I'm pretty sure you could find things to do online or like find things to build online or build like a flight software emulator or build some kind of simulator that or dive deep into the flight software architecture and understand how that flight software fits in with the rest of the system. You have to do something. Just take the first step that gets you in that direction. So once you identify that as a direction of where you want to go, you start realizing, okay, how do I get better at the skills that are needed for that? And in order to understand what skills you need for that is very easy. For example, just look up the job you're interested in, see the preferred job like requirements and 
and go learn how to do them. See the software that they use and go learn how to use that software. Download it online. Most software have free software for like students. And if they don't, contact your school. Say, hey, I really want to have this software. Can you please help me get it? And if they don't, find a similar software that's free. Just you have to do something in the direction of that to increase, again, the odds of you developing the skill, which then would increase the odds of the people at that job taking you more seriously. So it really just comes down to identifying a target and then just like scale volume. So like just putting in the hours and time and concentration and focusing because time alone is not really a factor. If you're like programming something and you're like checking your phone every like two minutes and you're not really deeply engaging, you're not in a state of flow, you're not going to retain or learn as much. So one, one hour could go for two people. Who, one is like on their phone half the time. The other one just puts their phone in another room and is entirely focused on building the project. Even though the same amount of time passes by, that person has learned a lot more. So once you're able to build the skill to concentrate and then do that for extended periods of time and then do it while working on a project that's going to help you get you there, you're again, stacking the odds in your favor and you're increasing the likelihood that you get that nice job. Now, the good news about this is even if you don't get that specific job, well, guess what? You just spent your time and energy building a valuable skill that you can go and use and apply for another job. And that's the magic of focusing on skill building than to like network and tactics. And I know that like networking is very important when it comes time to actually try to land an internship and try to land a job. But what about that rest of the year where you're just sitting and, and you're either like showing up to class and just kind of barely getting by? Why not use that time to build skills and get really good at one or two things such that even if you don't get the dream job or you don't get your second dream job or you don't get anything you want, you've at least, at least invested most of your time building a skill that's likely going to help you get something else down the line because opportunity is going to open up down the line. And you want to make sure that you're learning by doing and not just by absorbing information. Absorbing information is okay, but until you go and try to build the thing, that's really where you're going to learn. For example, instead of like taking a Python course or like attending lectures on Python, why not try to build a game from scratch in Python? Because that's going to force you to go through step by step what needs to happen. And, and then you're going to have a very specific target outcome that you want to build a function or to know how to define your variables. And then you'll go step by step and there'll be something you'll be working towards and you're going to learn more in one week than you would in like three months of lectures. So learn by doing, learn by Googling things and just asking yourself, what do I need to get there? And if you're really stuck, find people to ask for help. And yeah, just act. Action will force you to prioritize and think about what actually matters. Now, finally, one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, the networking aspect is very important, but there's actually a way that you could network while gaining the skill. And, and there's a way to network in a much more organic way than to try to like run into people and whatnot. And I actually made a whole video about it. So I strongly encourage you to watch it, it should be over here.